Welcome everyone to First Presbyterian Church and our community worship Lenten service on today. We've been blessed with our Emerald Bells today and we thank you all very much for offering that worship for us this morning. I'll remind you that there are in the aisle baskets for you to offer and the offering for um, that, that come through these baskets are going to Greater Greenwood United Ministries, a great ministry here in Greenwood to serve uh, many folks here. So we encourage you to do that after the service as you leave today. Friends, if you are able, I invite you to stand and let us say together our call to worship as printed in your bulletin this morning. As Christians, we are expected to be an ethical people. We become such people not on our own, but because God in Christ first loved and forgave us. Let us now sing together hymn number 309 found in the blue hymnals. I invite you to be seated. Today's scripture comes to us from the letter to the Ephesians. Let us listen in chapter 4, starting with verse 29. We've printed this in your bulletin if you wish to follow along. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from 
you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Most holy and gracious God, we are thankful today to be in this place where we are surrounded by brothers and sisters to lift up one another to encounter you in our life. We pray now, O Lord, in this time that your word resonate with our hearts, that our minds may be transformed, and that we may hear your voice through the frailty of this messenger. May your power come strongly to us. Speak to us, Lord, for we, your servants, are listening. Amen. Researchers at the University of California a few years ago in San Diego produced a study showing that people and their dogs often look alike. In the study, a panel of student judges were able to match 16 out of 25 purebred dogs to their owners. The reason for this, researchers say, is because dog owners tend to choose a pet bearing their resemblance in some way. Now think about this for a moment. This should hit home for some of us. The study identified the similarities between the pets and the people as both oftentimes physical characteristics and or personality traits. Happy, outgoing, and affectionate dogs tend to be owned by warm and friendly people. Hairless, pop-eyed, pug-nosed pooches are, well, you get the idea. (laughs) The study is humorous in many ways because there's a lot of truth here. Look at our little pet next to us and say, yeah, I love this guy or this girl and yeah, we do resemble each other. This is actually the way that it should be, and the way that we also, and more so, resemble our Creator. We were, to use the passages in Genesis, created in the image of God. There are those passages right at the beginning in The creation story, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then later on in a few chapters, Genesis 5, 1 says, When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Now in this text, this is pulling from the Old Testament, obviously, in the Old Testament written in Hebrew, we go to that original text there, and, and the term used in this Genesis passage is Selim Elohim. The first word there is Selim, translated in several different ways into English as a replica, a likeness, or an image. We are created as a replica, as an image 
And then the second word there is what? Elohim. May sound more familiar to you, meaning what? God, right. So we were created in the image of God. That then moved over into the Latin term and is used as the imago dei, the image of God. In English, it hits right home. Then if we are to be the image of God, there should be a message behind that creation. One message that we could pull from that is we should feel really good about the fact that we are in God's image so that whenever we look at ourselves, we should see something beautiful. We should look in the mirror and say, you are beautiful. Created perfect in God's image. Every ounce of you, every hair on your head, every wrinkle on your skin, every mole, every bump, every finger, every leg, every eyelash. Perfect. Created in the image of God. This message is powerful for a generation of believers who struggle to see themselves as beautiful. There's nothing that you can do to make your created image more beautiful because God created you that way. This is the first message that comes out of being made in the image of God. You are beautiful. But there is a second message that comes along with this that cannot be avoided. The second message is, in fact, not so much words of encouragement, but instead is words of a challenge. And here is the question. How much do you resemble God? Does this hit home? Well, if you're not sure how to answer that question, let me read for you the Ephesians text today. Let no one, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed by the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Does this, does this resemble you? Because the very next line is what should hit home then. As God in Christ forgave you. We are to forgive. We are created in the image of God. As a reminder of our beauty and as a challenge of how much we resemble God in our daily walk. What comes along with this Imago Dei is something even greater. Now in the day of the emergence of all of these superhero movies that are coming out, I really like these superhero movies. I love the idea of someone with great super strength going and saving people and rescuing and saving the day and all smiles at the end of the story. In the same way, when we imagine ourselves being created in the image of God, with that creation is now embedded inside of us, watch this, superpowers. Now we have been given... 
just in the creation itself, superpowers. And that the text says we resemble God. So what that means is now we carry with us some power. Some power inside of us that unfortunately we forget. It's found right here in this text. It says there at the beginning, it says, but only such as is good for building up. You hear that? Part of our superpower is that we too now have the power of creation. We too now have the power to build. We can build people up. We now are not cre- creator, creation that just tears stuff down. That's what the rest of the text says. If you're living in bitterness, if you spend all of your day looking at the news stories... And pointing your finger at who you don't like. And then you get up from your sofa and you walk out the door. And everyone you pass along the streets, you see as people that are not doing things right. They need to get their act together. And you spend all day long pointing your finger. And what you're doing with this idea is that you are not using your superpower. Instead, you are tearing down. And God says, you are in my image now, and you now are to build up. You are to create. You are to lift up. The second superpower that we get by being in the image of God is this. It comes at the very end of our passage here. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave you. Now this is tricky. This is tricky because even Jesus got in trouble for doing this. Do you remember the story of Jesus inside of this hut where he's speaking to a group of people and the crowd is pressing in on him? And it says that there is... There's someone who is bedridden, paralyzed. And there's a group of people that pick this paralyzed guy up and they can't get to Jesus. So what do they do? So they start to to climb up on top of the building and they find a hole on top of the building and pull the hole open. They have got to get this person to Jesus. They've got to get healing to Jesus. And so they lower him down right there in front of Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Watch this blasphemy. Watch what Jesus does. Jesus says, and when he saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. You hear I just said that's a blasphemy? Or at least the Pharisees thought so. Because when they saw this, they began to question. They said, who is this who speaks blasphemies? How can he possibly forgive sins? Because only God can do that. You see, the problem they're having here is that Jesus is offering absolution. Jesus is offering a formal release from the obligation or debt incurred in that person he is offering release and the pharisees are furious about it the question the question that baffles so many of us in this place in the text is where's the danger in this where's the danger in the son of god Offering forgiveness and release to the captives. What's so scary about that? In the same way, where is the danger in us having the superpower to turn to our neighbor and say, God forgives you. God loves you. Because God loves me, and if He can love me, He can love you. The text says, 
Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away. Why is it so hard for us to do that? Why do we struggle so much to be in God's image that we refuse to let these things along with malice be put away? Why is it so hard for us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you? Why do we struggle so much with being able to release but we find ourselves just like the scribes and the Pharisees? Oh, you're going to get yours in the end. That's what we spend all of our time doing. But God says, I've given you a superpower. And it is not to tear down. It is not to judge and condemn and hate. And carry with you anger and slander. It is not to separate yourselves depending on what denomination you go to. Or what church sanctuary you're in. Or what your race is. Or what your ethnicity, what your background is. What your language is. You are not called to separate yourself. You were created to forgive. You were created to build up. Now if you walk your life in the bitterness of an inability to forgive. That bitterness will live deep inside of you and it will carry on and weigh you down for the rest of your days. But what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees in response to their questioning was very different. He said, why do you question in your hearts Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say rise and walk? Friends, God today says both to us. For we, just like this paralyzed man, are in desperate need of the ability to walk. God created you to walk. God created you to love. God created you to forgive. God created you to build up. The question today is how well, how well do you resemble the image you were created to be? Amen. Friends, let's take a moment. Let's take a moment in this time of Lent to reflect on how we, yes, even made in the image of God, have failed to reflect that image. Let us together pray a prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, We confess that we do not live lives in imitation of you and Christ. We are not always kind or tender-hearted or forgiving or joining. Forgive us, we pray. Implant your spirit in our souls so that we shall do automatically that which is godly in every situation. And our actions may thus reflect the kingdom promised by Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you, if you're able, to stand and let us sing together our closing hymn, number 355.
May the peace of the Lord be with you. As we leave this place, I encourage you to turn and share the peace with one another. And forgive one another. Love one another. Just as God has forgiven and loved you. And carry that into the world. And build up all those you encounter. Go now in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.